In a landmark policy shift, U.S. President Donald Trump has officially announced the cancellation of NASA's flagship deep space exploration programs, the Space Launch System, SLS, the Orion spacecraft, and the Lunar Gateway Project. This decision marks a dramatic departure from NASA's previous trajectory toward returning astronauts to the moon and eventually reaching Mars under the Artemis program. At the same time, the White House has proposed another round of budget cuts for NASA, this time suggesting an end to programs like the Space Launch System, Orion, and the Lunar Gateway. Despite this development, NASA has just officially received the Orion capsule for Artemis II. Orion is now pretty much ready for Artemis II. And so the idea is that if we can get SLS and Orion operational, Artemis II goes well, and that's the one with a crew on board. And it's going around the moon, a certain lunar, but not landing on the moon. If Artemis II is successful, that paves the way for Artemis III, which is that human landing. The Space Launch System, SLS, was NASA's most powerful rocket, designed to launch astronauts beyond Earth orbit for the first time since the Apollo era. The Orion spacecraft was intended to carry crews on deep space missions, providing life support, emergency abort capabilities, and re-entry from deep space speeds. The Lunar Gateway, a small space station planned for orbit around the Moon, was envisioned as a critical staging point for sustainable lunar exploration and missions to Mars. Now let's shift our focus to the White House's recently proposed cuts to NASA's budget, an update that has sparked widespread concern and debate across the space industry. On May 2, the White House released its preliminary discretionary funding outline for fiscal year 2026. Commonly referred to as the skinny budget, this document gives a broad overview of where funding increases and cuts are expected ahead of the full budget release later in May. President Trump justified the cancellation by citing cost overruns, delays, and a strategic pivot toward commercial partnerships. The administration emphasized a shift toward leveraging private sector launch capabilities and fostering new space technologies through companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin. The decision has drawn mixed reactions. Supporters argue it streamlines NASA's mission and reduces government spending, while critics warn it could undermine U.S. leadership in space exploration and delay human missions beyond low Earth orbit. In this outline, NASA emerges as one of the hardest hit agencies. While human space exploration, the division responsible for Moon and Mars missions will see an increase. Nearly every other branch within NASA is slated for cuts. These areas include space science, Earth science, mission support, aeronautics, space technology, the International Space Station, STEM engagement, and legacy human exploration systems. This reduction in funding was anticipated in the initial April 10th announcement. But the full scope revealed on May 2nd is even more dramatic. In total, NASA's budget would drop to $18.8 .8 billion under this proposal, a staggering 25% reduction from the $24.9 billion allocated for fiscal year 2025. That's even deeper than the 20% cut proposed just weeks earlier, which aimed to reduce the budget to $20 billion. The SLS program has faced substantial budget overruns and schedule delays. Development costs have soared to $23 billion since 2010 with each launch estimated at around $4 billion. Similarly, the Orion capsule has encountered technical issues, including heat shield problems, contributing to delays in the Artemis program. NASA is now expected to reevaluate its exploration roadmap, with a greater emphasis on commercial crew and cargo services, robotic exploration, and public-private partnerships to develop next-generation space infrastructure. On May 2, 2025, the Trump administration unveiled its fiscal year 2026 budget proposal, signaling a significant shift in U.S. space policy by recommending the termination of NASA's Space Launch System, SLS, Orion Crew Capsule, and the Lunar Gateway Program after the Artemis III mission. This proposal marks a departure from traditional government-led space exploration, favoring increased reliance on commercial partners like SpaceX. The administration advocates for transitioning to more cost-effective commercial systems. The budget proposal allocates $1 billion for Mars-related programs and $7 billion for lunar exploration, emphasizing partnerships with private companies like SpaceX. SpaceX's Starship, for instance, offers a reusable launch system with significantly lower costs per launch compared to SLS. The focus is shifting from lunar missions to Mars exploration. 
the proposed budget cuts $2.265 billion from space science missions, including the termination of the Mars Sample Return Mission, with similar objectives expected to be fulfilled by crewed missions. Most notably, NASA's science programs would be slashed nearly in half. Despite these deep cuts, the budget document claims that the reductions are aligned with the administration's goals of returning to the moon before China and eventually sending humans to Mars. However, organizations like the Planetary Society have labeled this plan the largest single-year cut to NASA in American history. And many are raising questions about how the agency is expected to achieve such ambitious goals with far fewer resources. One of the most attention-grabbing elements of the proposal is the plan phase out of NASA's legacy human exploration systems, specifically the Space Launch System, the Orion Crew Cap, Pole, and the Lunar Gateway. According to the document, both SLS and Orion will be retired after completing just two more missions, Artemis II and Artemis III. This will bring the total number of launches for each system to three before they are discontinued. The rationale? High costs and consistent delays. SLS alone is reported to cost $4 billion per launch, as currently 140% over budget. By phasing out these systems, the administration expects to save approximately $879 million. Instead, the budget proposes investing in more affordable commercial systems that can support future lunar missions more efficiently and frequently. This announcement effectively signals the end for two of NASA's most debated programs. Over the years, SLS and Orion have drawn criticism for their sluggish development, ballooning costs, and outdated architecture, especially when compared to rapid advancements in commercial spaceflight. The determination of these systems will also impact associated infrastructure. For instance, Mobile Launcher 2, which was specifically developed for the upgraded SLS. Block 1B configuration and was scheduled to be used for Artemis 4, is now in jeopardy. This system, too, has faced significant issues with cost overruns, schedule delays, and quality control problems. With the cancellation of its intended launch vehicle, Mobile Launcher 2 will likely be rendered obsolete. This shift in priority also brings major implications for future lunar missions. If SLS and Orion are retired, any missions beyond Artemis 3 will rely entirely on commercial launch and landing systems, such as SpaceX's Starship, Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket, and its Blue Moon Lunar Lander. This represents a massive transformation in how America approaches crewed spaceflight and lunar exploration. At present, hardware preparations for Artemis 2 are underway, which we'll explore and more. However, the hardware for Artemis 3 has yet to be publicly revealed. If the budget proposal moves forward as written, Artemis 3 will become a historic final flight for SLS and Orion. Another major casualty of the budget proposal is the Lunar Gateway, a small space station intended to orbit the Moon and serve as a staging point for lunar missions. Like SLS and Orion, the Gateway project has been criticized for being overly complex, expensive, and poorly aligned with the capabilities of newer systems, such as Starship. The budget proposal explicitly states, budget also proposes to terminate the Gateway, a small lunar space station in development with international partners, which would have been used to support future SLS and Orion missions. With the retirement of both vehicles, the Gateway loses its primary function. This means NASA is moving away from plans to construct an orbital outpost near the Moon. Other Artemis missions will instead land directly on the lunar surface, echoing the mission profile of the Apollo era. This shift would dramatically simplify mission architecture, reduce operational costs, and speed up timelines. Still, the fate of the Lunar Gateway may not be entirely sealed, as an international project involving agencies like ESA and the CSA, or Canadian Space Agency, its feature may now rest in their hands. NASA's withdrawal would significantly impact the program but other partners may choose to continue development. Notably, at the end of April, the first gateway module, HALO, was delivered to NASA facilities, sparking hope that the project might yet be salvaged. However, if the cancellation proposal moves forward, HALO could end up as the only completed 
component of the gateway. In summary, the proposed NASA budget for fiscal year 2026 marks a significant turning point. If approved, it could mean the end of several long-standing programs and a dramatic shift toward commercial partnerships for human space exploration. The proposed cuts have sparked immediate backlash from NASA stakeholders, members of Congress, and industry leaders including Musk and Jared Isaacman. Many fear that critical missions, like the Mars sample return, the ISS extension, and the Next Generation Space Telescopes, could be delayed or cancelled entirely. Whether or not this proposal pass remains uncertain. For now, we're focusing on the potential cancellation of NASA's core systems. As previously mentioned, the recent budget cuts will not affect the upcoming Artemis missions. In fact, NASA has just taken a significant step forward with the Orion spacecraft for Artemis II. On the 1st of May, Lockheed Martin, the primary contractor responsible for building Orion, announced that it has officially delivered the Artemis II capsule to NASA. This milestone reinforces the current timeline, keeping the mission on track for its target. At launch in April of 2026, now that the spacecraft has been handed over, Orion will be transported to the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. There, it will undergo a series of final tests and processing activities. These include integration of critical life support systems, audio communications, crew, accommodations like exercise equipment and the installation of the launch abort system, all of which are essential for human spaceflight readiness. Meanwhile, the Space Launch System rocket that will carry Orion is also progressing. Its Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, or ICPS, delivered in mid-April is now likely being prepped in NASA's iconic vehicle assembly building at KSC. Orion's readiness is especially significant in light of earlier concerns raised after Artemis I, particularly regarding the performance of the spacecraft's heat shield. Addressing this, Kirk Shireman, Lockheed Martin's Vice President of Human Space Exploration, said, The Orion spacecraft completion for Artemis II is a major step forward in our nation's efforts to develop a long-term lunar presence. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member, so click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.